Well, you're going to have several decisions to make in this movement about articulation. And uh, unless you have a very rapid single tongue, you're probably going to use a combination of the double tongue in this excerpt. And that's what I do. But let me first uh, address ways in which I practiced this, uh, this composition over the years and ways in which I think will be helpful for you with your articulation on the bassoon, not only in this excerpt, Beethoven's Fourth, but also in your other repertoire. What I suggest you do, and let's take the very first opening tutti section, I suggest you practice this in multiple ways. First, making sure that your uh, fingering is sound, practice it all slurred. <laughs> there at the end. That's okay. We're mainly concerned about these 16th notes. So I practice it all slur, then I practice it legato tonguing, single tongue. Get the idea there. Then as short as possible single tongue. By the way, make certain you're using the correct fingerings that I discussed earlier. That is making sure the flick key is down for every B flat, A, and C natural. That is B flat 3, A3, and C natural 4. All of those above open F. Okay, so that was two of our articulations, the slurred uh, single tongue, or, or the very legato single tongue, and the staccato single tongue. Next, I work on the double tongue, when I play the double tongue here, I play it as legato as possible, trying to minimize the K syllable, the ka or the ga syllable. That wasn't very good. Let me try again. A little better. At a slow speed, it really sounds pretty bad. Um, but the faster speeds, uh, a lot of that is minimized. But at the slow speed, work on keeping the K or the G syllable as far forward in your mouth as possible, as legato and inobtrusive as possible. You will notice as you're switching uh, registers on the bassoon that the way in which you have to tongue has to change slightly as well. And many people find that pulling the reed out of the mouth is a more successful way to engage uh, this double tongue or multiple tonguings. The final method I use and I practice is actually the method I, I tongue rapidly with the most. Um, this is called a mixed tonguing, sometimes I call it a combination tonguing, because it combines a double tongue uh, grouping with single tongue grouping. So I go ta ka ta ta, ta ka ta ta. So very slowly, that's how I do that. And, and what you heard in, in the opening of this video is with me tonguing with that pattern. Um, so what I suggest is then you've got uh, five different styles uh, working on the 16th note passages in the fourth movement of the Beethoven fourth. I suggest you take a metronome every day. Start it out slowly, maybe a quarter note equals 80, and slowly progress up the different metronome markings. What you're going to find is there's going to be a certain place where the single tongue, the legatissimo, staccatissimo single tongues, start coming closer and closer and closer together. And there will be a metronome marking where you, you, you can't separate them. What you want to do is you want to try to keep them as separate as possible because once they meet, I usually find one more metronome marking or two. And when I'm talking about metronome markings, I'm of course talking about the old-fashioned metronome where we went in certain sequences, you know, 116, 120, 126, uh, 132, one, you know, one. 
38, etc., 144. So you, you'll find that when these two join on a certain level, you don't have much longer up up the, the speed scale as you were the metronome marking scale before your single tonguing will will stop. The nice thing about working at all these tongues at all the speeds is you really learn about your uh, the ability of your tongue to move. And you'll discover there are certain ruts, certain places where, wow, single tongue didn't work there, but then you go a little faster and now it's working. Or this mixed tonguing works and then doesn't work and then it works and the double tongue and, and things like that. So you're working on speed. When your single tongue drops out, hopefully you're, you're, you've practiced enough that your double tongue is going and you're mixed tonguing. The reason I encourage you to use all of these tonguings and practice different patterns is you may not really know which tonguing will work for you right now. It may be, in fact, several months till you know that. I tell my students that, uh, what's the sure way of winning a horse race? And they're, they're puzzled. Well, you pick a fast horse and you work it really hard or whatever. No, no, I tell them the sure way of winning a horse race is to make sure that every horse entered in that race is owned by you. Then you're a sure winner. I mean, if there's six in the race, and you win one, then your other five lose, but that's okay. You want to find the tonguing pattern, as it were, that will work best for you. And it may be that some situations one pattern will work better than the other. So if you have this flexibility with your articulation, I hope you can always come out, as it were, the winner there, and, and, and you'll have something that's successful for you.